Hi, I'm Jeffrey Pickett from Stoughton Media Access. Before the start of this current school year, Joel Harding, the Director of Support Services for the Stoughton Public Schools, gave us a tour of the existing conditions of Stoughton High School. On Tuesday, June 7th, residents will be asked to support a debt exclusion to fund a new Stoughton High School. So before that vote takes place, we're going to reshow the portion of this episode which shows the tour of the existing conditions of Stoughton High School so you can get an idea of what the building is like in its current state. If you're looking to learn more about the Stoughton High building project itself, like the budget, the tax impact, the site plan, I encourage you to check out the many programs airing on Stoughton Media Access which go into this very subject. But in the meantime, here is the tour of the existing conditions of Stoughton High School. So I'm here with Joel Harding, the Director of Maintenance and Operations for the Stoughton Public School System, and we're starting this tour on the A4 part of the building, which infamous for uh, students and parents alike who have either gone through this school system or have sent their kids through this school system. Uh, we are in the oldest part of the building right now. Uh, this building was constructed in 1923. Correct. And when you walk on the floors, you might not be able to see this on television. You get the uh, the creaks, and you know this really is a this is a throwback. And it so is. Yes. Uh, this particular this floor right here actually poses a significant issue currently for the students and staff at Stoughton High School, especially if there's anybody with disabilities or. Uh, they break a leg during the school year or are in crutches. So kind of talk about that a little bit. It is not accessible at all. We do not have an elevator to this level. Uh, this is, uh, as you mentioned, the fourth floor. Um, this is the only building, uh, and we'll get into why I call it buildings, uh, that has a fourth floor. Um, so if any student has a class up here that uh, is taking place and has to be on crutches or in a wheelchair or something, we have to move that class down to a lower level so that that uh, student has access to that class. So that's one of the challenges of this building. As you mentioned, the noisy floors as people move through the corridors. Uh, we've also had an issue um, with the masonry wall. We've had to reinforce the masonry walls here in uh, the A building um, on several occasions because of uh, movement of the masonry. So there are several challenges uh, to this building alone. And one I'm noticing right now talking to you is the acoustics in here. Very, very uh, echoey and I could see that causing a problem in terms of education up here. This is in the English uh, department as their classrooms up here. Correct, especially when students mo are moving through the corridors. Uh, you'll get the, the echoing uh, of, off the walls, off the ceiling. Uh, you'll get the, the squeaky floors. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a considerable challenge. Well, let's start a tour up here and you can show us around and maybe in some of the classrooms. Sure. So in this situation, actually, if you can take a shot of the floor, we've actually taken the wood floor up here and uh, put, in, put um, vinyl tile down, but many of the classrooms you'll see up here in A4 uh, still have uh, the wood, wood floors, which again cause an issue uh, as far as students moving around, uh, keeping them clean, uh, keeping them maintained, et cetera, et cetera. So everything has been retrofitted in, this, in the A building. Um, all of our Wi-Fi and um, IT materials had to come up, be retrofitted. Uh, the heating system had to be retrofitted. Uh, lighting all had to be retrofitted uh, into this building. This, this building wasn't designed for smart boards. And as you look through the building too, you see all the fire alarm had to be retrofitted. The intercom system, so everything's surface mounted because it's all retrofitted.
So again, we're in uh, A200 area. Uh, this is, was the original main entrance of the high school. Uh, it's now the high school administrative offices. Um, but again, as we walk through, you'll see everything has to be retrofitted. Um, it's old construction, obviously, uh, from 20 set, 23. Just as an aside, this building is a wood frame building. Uh, the rest of the building is steel frame, but the A building is still uh, a wood frame building. Masonry on this side of the building has become so porous. There is constant damage, constant issues in these classrooms and an area down in Guidance, which we'll look at in a little while, that uh, whenever it rains, um, we have water um, infiltrating into, into the building. So we're inside the uh, existing media center slash library for the high school. Um, it's my understanding that this used to be uh, the cafeteria slash gymnasium for the original building uh, and has been converted, but you can see um, how low the ceilings are in the, in the old gym. So I'm not sure how much gym time the kids got at that time. So. What's, the, what's the current issues with the media center right now as it pertains to its current use? Well, again, if you could look around here, there's a wall right here. So you don't have any sight lines for trying to uh, see the entire uh, media center. Um, it's again had to be retrofitted for any time we, we want any type of IT equipment, uh, the computers, the smart boards, the things like that all had to be retrofitted. Uh, we have again this uh, in this area over here there's just a one story above us uh, and of course that roof uh, leaks and we need a new roof. Uh, at some point we're going to need a new roof on the whole building. So. Those are just some of the issues that we're dealing with. So we're continuing our tour and we're still in the A building, but in a part where most people, actually few if any students or teachers for that matter, uh, would be going down here. Where are we in the A building, Joel? We're in the basement of the A building, uh, which was the original boiler room for, for the A building. Uh, it is now housing uh, one of our emergency generators and also the transformers, the national grid transformers for all the electrical for the whole building uh, is down here. There's also a walkway, if you can turn around and point back in that direction, if you see that walkway, that will go into the second boiler room, the B building boiler room, where our new bo newer boilers are. This is just showing the area where the old coal chute was, um, because this building originally in 23 was fired by coal, was heated by coal. So we're just about to leave the A building and head into the B building, which built in 1952? Correct. And so, uh, what are some of the challenges that we should be looking out for in this building? Some of the similar challenges that we had in the A building, uh, er everything had to be retrofitted from fire alarm, heating, uh, HVAC uh, controls, uh, IT networks, phones, lighting. Um, a lot of the electrical that is in place was, uh, is original, uh, so it's back from the 1950s, meaning the, uh, the breaker panels, the breakers, things like that. So a lot of the things, including the HVAC units that you'll see as we walk through, um, are no longer made. So we cannot get parts for them. So if we need to, um, if for instance a fan fails in a univent or a shaft breaks or something, we have to have it machined rather than going out and buying it off the shelf, which is, as you know, considerably more expensive. So, so that's, we'll head into yeah, B200. This is the existing guidance suites. This uh, originally was three classrooms um, that back in 1993-94, um, we took down the walls here and built the guidance suite. Um, but we still have some significant issues here. So again, as we're walking along, you can see the evidence of, of the water infiltration in through the uh, masonry of the uh, B building. Um, this occurs uh, B third, B second, and of course down into B first, it runs down through. Over time, this is going to be, a, it's, it, well, it, it's a significant issue now, but obviously uh, infiltration into your building envelope is not a good, good thing of, of having water uh, infiltrated in. So, so again, this is uh, the clinic for the high school, for 1,000 student high school. See, this is mainly the office area. 
And then uh, we have the area where they do um, have the students come in and rest uh, when they're ill, very minimal. It's quite, quite a challenge for the nursing staff uh, in this building. So this is uh, one of our server rooms. Uh, it used to be a closet. You know, we're down here in B100, just to show you where we have to squeeze everything in wherever we can. Actually, this space is probably hotter than the classroom because it's generating its own heat. So areas that you see where the ceiling tiles are, are missing uh, is where water has infiltrated down from B3 and B2. Um, and we don't even bother to put ceiling tiles back in them because every time it rains, they just get uh, totally water soaked and usually fall in. So we just come in here with barrels and hampers and put them underneath uh, when it does rain. So we're in the boiler room right now in B building, again, an area where uh, students and the teachers really aren't going to be during the course of the day. Right. But now, not that a room like this would be new and shiny anyways, uh, even in a new building, but just kind of explain uh, the structural challenges that this room presents to you. Well, obviously, um, these boilers are from 1988. Uh, this building, uh, B, building C and building A are all steam heated versus D and E, which are the newer, newer uh, buildings, which are hot water, have hot water. So steam system is much more finicky, uh, much more, requires much more maintenance, um, much more hands-on uh, than a hot water system. The steam system in A, B, and C, it's, it's a heat that is very hard to control. So some days you'll come in on, on um, the A and B first or second floors, second levels, um, people will be cold. Up on the A fourth level, the windows will be open. So it, it, it's just not, it was a system designed for cheap fuel uh, and didn't have a lot of controls. The buildings don't have a lot of in, uh, insulation. So over here, A, B, and C, it's very difficult to, to get everybody in a balance that uh, for um, the heating uh, systems that everybody agrees to. Again, you can, if you look up and see uh, all the piping, all of the electrical is basically from the 50s. Um, everything that we're dealing with, if we have to retrofit anything, uh, the materials and parts are no longer available. Uh, so those are just some of the challenges. And so, uh, hearing you correctly, the new boilers are 25 plus years old. Correct, correct. At some point that these boilers are probably on the average, they say that, that boilers are good for about 25 years, so they're, they're at the end of their life cycle. Right. And conceivably, these would be issues that would be fixed in a new or renovated high school. Um, I would assume that, uh, obviously, in a new building, and all the systems would be new. They would be mo more modern. Uh, they would meet uh, today's codes. Uh, even in a renovated building, you basically would have to strip this all out and start all over again so that um, the whatever is left uh, essentially has one boiler room, one power plant, and everything is fed from that one location. So we're here in the gym now. Correct. And back in 2012, the Stoughton High boys basketball team, uh, highly ranked, would have been able to host two tournament games the size of this gym forced them to a neutral site Correct. in round two. Correct. You don't see the bleachers down behind oh, us, but when they are down, they only see 400. 400, maybe? if that. Correct. And the student body is 1,100-ish. That is correct. So other than size, which is there's very little room along the baselines and right. the sidelines, uh, what are some of the other issues in this? Well, I understand. This, if you look at the gym, this is the only teaching, this is one big teaching station. So there's no way to divide this up to allow for smaller teaching stations uh, for inclement weather when people are coming in to uh, gym classes are coming in, you've got a, uh, a girls class, a boys class or whatever. They've got to be combined because this is only one teaching station. Um, other than that, from my point of view, again, this is C building. We are in C building, what we consider C building. 
that's from the 1950s. Again, this is the latter part of the 1950s. But again, it's still a steam heated system. Uh, it has the same issues essentially that A and B have. Um, it, it, it's just very difficult to, to maintain a, a, a facility of this age and structure. So we're here now in the D building, which is used for science classrooms, and we're here in a science lab, uh, D102. And I noticed some change from when I was in high school. We have, uh, tell, tell me about this structure right here going. This again is a retrofit. This is a gas line coming in for the lab. And if you look up here as well, you'll see all these hanging things. This is electrical for microscopes, whatever they need them for. And again, we had to retrofit uh, these classrooms just uh, like we did the A, B, and C building. Uh, this building was built in the early 60s. Uh, D and E were built in the early 60s. Um, but again, they still are not built for uh, the type of education that is going on today. Yeah. Some of the issues that we have in the, in the labs obviously are, are, are physical, just in the size of the labs alone. Um, they are nowhere near large enough for the uh, types of things that are trying to be done today in uh, our STEM program. Um, in addition, uh, anything um, that needs to be maintained, the univents, uh, the um, different systems, electrical, plumbing, uh, it's 40, 45 years old. So it, it's very difficult to, to deal with those. This is the one elevator for Stoughton High School. It's, it's on the outside edge of D building. So it will get you to the first floor uh, of D. And then from there, you have to cross all the way across. If you're going to, say, the, say the high school office, uh, you would have to cross the entire building to get to the high school office if you came to D second to go to A, a second, uh, where the high school office is. The elevator, as it's set up now, is not ADA compliant. It's too small. Uh, but we're grandfathered in, it's here, um, it's still working. So, but again, as we discussed earlier, A4 is not accessible uh, by this elevator, by any elevator, so that uh, entire floor is not ADA compliant. So we're ending our tour here in the E building, which along with the D building is actually the newest part of the school, and yet that's still 50 years old. So the E building on the first floor is used for the sciences, and there's some administrative offices, and then on the second floor, it's for the arts. So here in uh, just finishing up this tour, it seems like some common words I've, I've heard, retrofit, Correct. and that it, the systems in place, electrical especially, and from a technological standpoint, you've really had to uh, adapt to the 21st century in a building that a lot of it is in the first half of the 20th Correct. century. Correct. Correct. Everything from fire alarm, PA system, clock system, uh, as we mentioned, uh, all the IT infrastructure, um, even things such as uh, plumbing, uh, HVAC controls, networks, uh, pneumatic controls, all basically had to be retrofitted into these buildings. Um, and the 64 product, uh, being D and E, really don't meet up well well with the 50s and the 20 buildings. Uh, so it, it's it's a challenge um, trying to get the everything to blend in and work as one system. In other words, throughout the entire building uh, when they were put in in phases. And it's. One thing you really can't tell from a video tour is just the building, kind of the maze-like setup of this building and how it doesn't really flow from one building. They're called, as you said, buildings for a reason. They seem to be almost five separate schools put into one. Exactly, and that's, that's uh, one of the issues that the administration has, been brought, has brought up is that they weren't, they were, the additions that were put on were put on based on where they would fit rather than how they fit and they don't really fit well together to make a complete building. Um, if you've driven to Stoughton High School, it's very difficult to find, find the front entrance to Stoughton High School just because of the different uh, layouts and the way the buildings were put together. 
And uh, just kind of final to wrap it up, uh, the tour is when you're looking ahead and you're part of the school building committee uh, looking at uh, the next steps for Stoughton High School working with the MSBA, uh, when you're talking a new building or a possible renovation addition, what are some of the challenges to uh, using this existing building potentially as part of a new Stoughton High School? Well, uh, obviously, if, if we're talking an addition and renovation, um, it's going to be a, have to be a total gut. So you're going to have to take everything out right back to the walls, to the what they call the bones of the building, back to the steel, uh, or in the case of A building, if A building stays, it's back to the wood, uh, and start all over again. The issue, uh, we still have to deal with the issue of the infrastructure, uh, you know, the, the two water systems coming in from, from both sides, uh, the electrical that comes into the A building and is fed underground to, to D and E. Um, so, and the other issue with the addition renovation is, where is the swing space? Where do we put the kids for the four or five years uh, that uh, some people have said it's going to take to renovate um, this building? Uh, with a new building, obviously, when you buy a new building or get a new building, everything is up to code. Everything is for to today's standards. Um, it's, it's one building. It should all work together. Um, so from my point of view, from my position, I would much prefer a new building. But that's, that's just my, my opinion. Well, thank you, Joel. I appreciate the time, and no thank you for taking us on this tour. Thanks.